Grand Theft Auto Publisher Take Two has overcharged for a bare bones port of a 13 year old game, and Grand Theft Auto 6 could release sooner than you think. GTA boss says mid gen consoles are kind of pointless, and PS5 has hit yet another sales milestone. All that and more right after this. Welcome back to another Foxy Games UK news video. If you like the work I do here, go ahead, like, subscribe, hit notification, follow Foxy Games UK via X Twitter or Twitter X at Foxy Games underscore UK for more informative gaming news, rumor, opinion, and gameplay. All relevant links sourced can be found in this video's description. So to our first news story, courtesy of PlayStationUniverse.com or PSU if you prefer, the PS5 has now shipped 41.7 million units globally just a mere week after I reported PS5 has hit that milestone of 40.3 million units. So Sony Interactive Entertainment has announced during its Q1 2023 results, it's that time of year, that the PS5 has shipped 41.7 million units worldwide. The news arrived just weeks after the format holder revealed that the console, as I say, had sold 40 million units. The PS5 moved a total of 3.3 million units during the three-month period ending June 30th, 2023. That's quite significant. Now, Sony is targeting PS5 shipments of 25 million for the entire fiscal year, helped in no small part by the arrival of Marvel Spider-Man 2 and its accompanying limited edition bundle, which Sony is marketing heavily. In fact, it's sold out everywhere. You can't even get the faceplate covers unless you're willing to pay scalped pricing. Now, everybody knows the PS5 was released back in November 2020 during the, what some would say, a pandemic resulting in a major stock shortage. That lasted over 18 months due to reduced availability of vital manufacturing components. However, the console is now readily available worldwide and for a limited time. During this month, it's up for grabs for a whopping £75, pounds, that's great British pounds, off the usual asking price or the equivalent in US dollars in your region. So these are strong, strong, strong numbers for Sony. And along with the rumors regarding the release of a new PS5 model featuring a detachable disk drive, where evidently they're trying to get rid of the disk based systems are the only ones on sale. And, uh, you know, releasing this detachable disk drive as well as reports of a PS5 Pro, which we'll delve into a little deeper towards the end of the video. There you have it. Let me know what you think of that in the comments. So now take two, take two, take two, take two. Not exactly endearing themselves to the gaming community overall at this point in time, though we'll get into all that shortly. Take two have hinted that Grand Theft Auto 6 will launch in 2020. Four, Take Two Interactive once again has reported that the company expects a significant increase in revenue for financial year 25, suggesting that Grand Theft Auto 6 could release in 2024. I would peg it at November 2024. So, in the latest earnings call, Take Two CEO and Chairman Strauss Zelnick said, and I quote, We, Take Two, remain confident that we are positioning our business for a significant inflection point in fiscal 2025, which we believe will now include new record levels of operating performance. Take Two's fiscal year 25 runs between April 2024 and March 2025. Whilst to some, the news might just be buzzwords for investors, Take Two is expected a total of 8 billion in net bookings next year. This means versus the current fiscal year prediction of 5.5 billion US dollars, Take Two is expecting an increase of around 2.5 billion US dollars next year. That's some feat and you need a big hitter for that. Yes, Grand Theft Auto 6. If the publisher's prediction is because of the long anticipated GTA 6 not only could a reveal date be imminent, but we could expect to see a Grand Theft Auto 6 release somewhere around September to October 2024. As I say, I put it at November 
They're probably going to say September and then delay it until November. That seems to be par for course these days. But judging by past reveals and releases of Rockstar Games, the developer behind Grand Theft Auto 6, it is likely the announcement of Grand Theft Auto 6 will be made around October 2023. Again, I'd say September. It could be October, but I'm going with September for some reason. I don't know. I've got a feeling about September. It's just a gut feeling. But it wouldn't bother me if it came out in October either. A nice, swanky new Grand Theft Auto 6 trailer. So, I'd expect Grand Theft Auto 6 to actually release some 12 months post its initial announce. Though, let's, let's admit, Rockstar, among with many other publishers, are subject to delays. So things are really starting to reach fever pitch levels, progression into a true next generation, finally kicking off. We've been so tethered to last gen for so long during the PS5 and Xbox series generation that it's just about time now. I understand there are certain games that have been in development for a long, long time. Will launch of the PS4 version because of the transition, you know, predates the console's actual release. Fine, fine. But, uh, you know, apart from games like Final Fantasy 16, which I do believe should have been released on PS4 since it work began long before PS5 was available to consumers. So, there you have it. But in terms of a mid-gen upgrade console, well, Take-2 CEO says mid-generation upgrades like the rumored PS5 Pro, and I quote, aren't all that Meaningful, just shinier graphics at a cost. Well, hard to argue against that, isn't it? But that's what people want. They want extra boost in frames, little bit of sparkle in the graphics. That's what they choose to pay for. And on the flip side, because there are not really significant enhancements, not to justify spending a whole $500 or Great British Pounds, that's why many people don't buy Pro models, so there's been some buzz lately about potential mid-generation upgrades, specifically a rumoured PS5 Pro. And while there hasn't been any official confirmation of that as of yet, it has gotten plenty of people, you know, talking, bunch of conjecture about the need or not for these upgrades for both consumers and the developers. I mean, it is extra work for developers. Does the consumer necessarily need it? Should we just write out the generation until a whole new generation? Or do people want these mid-gen upgrades? Here's the thing. This is my experience with the PS4 Pro. I loved it. I, when I first got it, wow, look at this. Look at the graphics, amazing. What a jump from 900p, 1080p visuals of the vanilla PS4. But then as the generation went on, I saw that they were just tarting up the game's visuals. Really, the frame rates weren't that much more impressive. Though I don't regret buying it, it didn't feel necessary. That's the situation there. It didn't feel wholly necessary. And that's what the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X were all about. People who owned 4K TVs. For those who didn't own a 4K TV, as I say, the upgrade was entirely unnecessary. So the reality is many people got by with their vanilla. I'm talking about the original uh, release the original model design of the PS4. Some people are still playing on that system today. There you have it. Though for Take Two CEO Strauss Zelnick, at least mid generation upgrades don't really impact much. Speaking to IGN ahead of the release of Take Two's Q1 earnings, Zelnick said that the need for a mid generation console upgrade all depends on what that mid generation upgrade would look like. Is a quote, generally speaking, the mid-generation upgrades haven't really changed much. He went on to say that they aren't all that meaningful. And then he confirmed that they don't change the way he thinks about making games or selling games from a publisher's perspective. Like I said, you can say the same thing with the Xbox One to the Xbox One X. All that power, what was it, six T-flops, totally wasted on just making the Xbox One games have higher resolution and, you know, marginal improvements in frame rate if they had just imagine xbox one x was the launch xbox one console and games were targeted to just that hardware that systems capabilities i'm telling you now the games would look way better than you experienced during the one x generation and indeed 
PS4 Pro. The same goes for Sony. So it's not surprising that Zelnik feels this way, especially in the generation, because historically, mid-generation upgrades like PS4 Pro and, as I say, Xbox One X were largely focused on graphical and storage improvements, both of which are nice, really, for consumers, but don't actually make a huge splash in terms of how developers or publishers make games. And in this generation specifically, the market dealing with a slower adoption rate of new consoles due to the now concluded chip shortage and relatively strong support from previous generations. We also spoke to Zonic about rumors of a Switch successor and while he doesn't have much to say, he did say the publisher would almost certainly be an early supporter of the console, but he went on to say also, if it is not back compatible, it's sort of a stab in the back to all of the Switch owners out there. You know, so at the end of the day, I agree with him on some points, Strauss Zanik, and on other points, I don't. Like, I don't agree with the fact that uh, they're charging 50 bucks, 50 Great British Pounds for a basic Red Dead Redemption port, and it's not even 60 FPS, and it's only on PS4 and Switch. There are no Xbox versions, even though you can play by back, back compat and get all those features. Still, they could have made it a native PS5 and Xbox Series uh, release, 60 FPS. How hard would that have been? You know, bare minimum, 30 FPS at 4K without a native PS5 version is extremely odd to me. They could have at least, you know, released 60 FPS, but it seems Rockstar wanted bare minimum parity with the decades old Xbox 360 via back compat Xbox Series. And for 50 bucks. Boggles my brain. Well, actually, it doesn't. Because this is what you expect from these companies. People make them cash rich. People make them uh, extremely popular. And then they just pee all over the people that put them where they are. Problem with companies like Rockstar, uh, take two as a collective, rather, is they've, they're they revered by gamers. They, they're 100% revered by gamers. We love them. It's clearly gone to their collective heads. Now companies like Rockstar think will buy anything associated with its brand. You know, I've lived through enough generations to know this is a fatal mistake. Then they go on to say that, uh, he says that the Take-Two CEO boss says that $50 or 50 UK pounds or whatever, 40 pounds for Red Dead Redemption on Switch and PS4 is, and I quote, commercially accurate. <laughs> commercially accurate. Just because Take-Two can charge 50 bucks for a bare bones Red Dead Redemption port doesn't mean it should. This is a total cop-out statement and it is really shrouded in greed. The, I mean, let me give you these figures here. This is what Take-Two have earned. This is the money they've made from these franchises. Oh, yeah, and they're nickel and diamond. So look, Grand Theft Auto series, 405 million in sales. Grand Theft Auto 5, 185 million in sales. Red Dead Redemption series, 79 million in sales. Red Dead Redemption 2, 55 million in sales nba 2k series well over 140 million the borderlands series 80 million borderlands 3 wow 18 million so it's not like they're hurting for cash here especially you know after the grand theft auto trilogy debacle one would expect take two to make amends and perhaps charge yeah 20 uk pounds 20 bucks for Red Dead Redemption. Heck, based on their sales figures that I just gave you, for this Red Dead Redemption uh, series alone, it could afford to offer the port for free. Commercially accurate. Total greed, total greed. Listen, the people in the game community, don't forget Take Two, Mr. Strauss Sonic, long memories. But what say you? 
Let's continue the discussion cordially in the comments as that brings us to the end of the video. Just like, subscribe, hit notification bell, comment regularly on videos, and you can help Foxy Games UK reach more gamers. So feel free to share the video. You may also wish to consider supporting Foxy Games UK via Patreon because, well, we're like family now. Speaking of family, I lost my aunt just a few couple of days ago, and uh, you know, I'm going through the bereavement process. I just want to carry on with this, doing what I do, entertaining you guys, giving you the news that will keep me, you know, focused. But uh, thanks to everyone on Twitter for their thoughts, prayers, and the kind thoughts and uh, comments that you made. Yeah, that I think we're like family now, just got to me. But uh, yeah, link in the description. But that concludes our time together. Until next time, play games, not corporations. Thank you.